Hey friends, I want to say welcome to Montana Haven, Alaska edition. And I want to share something with you right off the bat here. I'm going to do something different I have not done before. I'm asking the question, what is hunting? What's it all about? And I'm going to quote from an author, Jim Reardon, Hunting Alaska's Far Places. So this is not something I wrote, but it tells the story about hunting much better than I can. So here is why we hunt all the many reasons. Hunting is a complex discipline, rich from centuries of handed down traditions. It is sitting on a hillside enjoying autumn foliage colors and eating sun-sweetened blueberries. It is peering through binoculars and spotting scope, hoping to find an animal worthy of harvesting. Hunting is good fellowship with a partner or partners, reading paperbacks and snoozing in a tent camp while waiting for a break in weather. Hunting is evenings around an open fire, eyes burning from wood smoke while warming your front and freezing your backside. Hunting is the lingering fragrance of wood smoke on your clothing. It is hearing the howl of a wolf, the roar of a river, the murmurs of a grayling stream, the cackle of a ptarmigan. It is the solid feel of a fine gun. A hunter doesn't depend on someone else to kill animals for his meat. Hunting is the quest for, for healthful, lean, and artificial hormone-free meat. Such a quest takes nothing away from the pleasure, excitement, and traditions of hunting. For many Alaskans, an annual hunt for moose, caribou, or other edible game is a cherished ritual that provides both recreation and food. A significant number of both bush and urban Alaskans depend on game animals for food. For some, hunting is the search for an animal that can be considered a trophy. If a hunter bags an animal of which he is proud, he has a trophy. It should make no difference what others think of it. The feelings of the hunter are all that should matter. His or her trophy, the antlers, the skin, the mount, or the photos, can be a memory-provoking relic, the concrete evidence of an enjoyable or exciting hunt, a reminder of a wild place, a successful stalk, a good shot, or a clean kill. Some hunters consider hunting to be a quest to seek and take the best, best and the biggest, the Boone and Crock records of North American big game trophy possible. I have no quarrel with these seekers of perfection, Provided the hunts are within the bounds of ethical sportsmanship and the meat is fully used, there should be a standard for each big game species, a guide as to what is an unusually fine specimen. My quarrel is with the hunter who is motivated to hunt for the book trophy, with the misplaced idea that collecting it brings him or her greater social status. In a way, a hunt should be more important than the trophy. In another way of viewing it, the hunt itself can be a trophy. Whether the reader of this collection of stories is a meat or trophy hunter or someone simply curious about hunting i hope he or she can enjoy the tangy smell of the wood smoke taste the blueberries and thrill at a wolf's howl while running roaming with me and others so i just want to say this is a great forward about hunting and that is one of the many reasons that we hunt so sit back enjoy this video i hope you guys enjoy it and thank you so much for subscribing and watching. God bless each one. Hey guys, look at this. Here's the Yukon River. Heading across the mighty Yukon. Woo, that's a river. We're in Coldfoot, Alaska, the last place you can get diesel fuel before you head up to Prudhoe Bay. Seven dollars and forty-nine cents a gallon. Ouch! We are driving what I think is a very beautiful area, but it is raining so hard and foggy we can't see a thing hardly. But what we can see looks amazing. Headed north. There's the famous Alaska pipeline.
I don't know if you can tell, but this road is just terrible. It's like ruddy and extremely muddy, but the scenery is just stunning. That is beautiful. Just going over the top of the pass up here, I think it's called Adigan Pass. And down the other side and fresh snow. Semi-splatter. Guys, we're having an amazing time. We are literally spotting caribou all over the place out here. We're finding muskox. We just got to figure out how to get to them now. This river is a raging river. We don't know how we're going to cross it yet. Or even if we can. Hey friends, welcome to Caribou Camp 2023. We're here in Alaska, Justin, Ethan, and this year I'm bringing Avalon along. And we're coming with my cousin Michael and his brother-in-law and Michael's two children. And we drove a day and a half to get here. And now we're in the process of getting our wall tent set up here. And we're gonna sleep in here tonight. It's raining, so we gotta get busy. Ready to survey our camp? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Right now, our tent is right there and it is pouring rain. See that mud puddle? Well, it was right there. And we, somehow we ridiculously picked a low spot when it started raining. It just all pooled right where we were. And Michael, there's Michael's wall tent. He is missing some braces for his wall tent. So they are kind of in trouble. One of them might sleep in the truck, one of them might sleep in my truck, and the two kids might sleep in the wall tent with us, we'll make some room. But there it is, all cozy, and I'll show you inside. Everything is wet, but it'll dry out. We've got a fire going. There's the fire, oh, it's already heating up in here, I'm feeling it. A little bit of smoke coming in here, so getting everything organized. A little bit of piles of stuff. Show you the cheery fire. Oh yeah, that's gonna heat this place up. Well, we woke up this morning to some fresh snow up on the mountains there. Fortunately, it's clouded over a bit. But uh, we are hiking in. We have a five mile corridor each side of the highway, so we have to hike in five miles before we can start hunting. So that's what we're gonna do. We got Avalon, Justin, Ethan, myself, and then we got um, Michael's brother-in-law. David is along here. He's married to my cousin as well. And uh, we're gonna go see if we can find some caribou. Should be great. Rain poured all night. It was kind of cold in the, the tent, but we survived and nice to be dry at least. And we're just gonna do a lot of hiking and a lot of glassing. And bring some caribou back with us, hopefully. Avalon found the caribou shed. Old one. Ooh, that's a big one. Nice. Whoa, that is huge. That's a huge one. It's outdated. <laughs> Check it out. Very nice. Hold it sideways so I can see it. Oh, look at that. Part of it fell off on the top. 
That thing's just a couple of years old, I think. Well, we've been hiking for three hours. Just look at that view. And it's starting to snow a little bit, rain, weather moving in. No caribou in sight. Take a little break right here. The walking is really difficult because it's got these, it's like walking on bowling balls everywhere, all these tussocks. And right here it's a little bit better where this moss is, but you get out here, out through there, and it's just, yeah, it's wet everywhere. It's really tiring. There she goes and finds another shed. Beautiful. So guys, we spotted a caribou. And David and Justin and Ethan are going after him. And I'm gonna stand over here, Avalon and I, and we're gonna glass and see if they can get him. Maybe get it on video, we'll see. He's all the way over above that pond on that point. Center of the screen, a mile and a half away. And there is Avalon with a load of antlers that she found, and Justin and Ethan. Sun came out a little bit, it turned out beautiful. Yeah, I, I think it down. They got him. Wow, that was quite a deal. Bowl down. Yes, good job, David. His first Alaska caribou. First day hunt. Pretty sweet. Only caribou we saw today. Wow, that is awesome. They are probably 500 yards, so we're going to see if we can get across there. There's a decent sized river to cross. Wow. Amazing. Okay, let's do a little recap here. So, Justin, Ethan, and David snuck way around. Probably they went over, definitely over two miles, because it was like a mile and a half as a, as a mile and a third, mile and a half as a crow flies. Avil and I went out around the other way in case he you know, would start grazing this way or something. And we kept getting closer and closer. I got within 500 yards, roughly 500 yards. And I got all ready to shoot in case he, they missed or he got spooked or something. But uh, all of a sudden they, they got close enough and they shot and took a couple tries, but they got him down. But just what a glorious afternoon. These mountains are just spectacular behind us here. Wow, and the sun keeps peeking through just a little bit. What a perfect day. Good job, Dave. Oh, man. Wow. In velvet. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. What a beautiful bull. All right. We are ready to roll. We're loaded. Got everything butchered up. The sun is low in the sky. And look at that. I imagine we're carrying, what, 70 pound packs at least, I would say. So it's about, what'd you say, David, seven miles back or something? Yeah. At least. As a crow flies, it's about six and three quarters. Oh my. Well, we're not going as a crow flies, so we're over seven for yeah, sure. Probably close to eight. Eight or so, yep. Long ways to go. Get home about midnight, I guess. Back to camp. 
That is what we're looking for right there. Some more of those. Check it out. We've been hiking probably an hour and we are pretty beat. It is hard going with these heavy packs going uphill, but we're just continuing on. The question is, while you're in the middle of this pain and suffering, is like, is it worth it? But tonight, after we get back, it'll be worth it. Well, it is 9 o'clock, and we are pretty bushed. We got many miles to go yet, so we're going to drop our packs and just skedaddle before it gets too dark. And we're just, David's going to come back probably tomorrow and keep shoveling meat the next couple days. There's the moon. It is getting ready to... Looks like it's waning just slightly. Guys, look at this. There are the northern lights while we are heading back to our camp. And there's the moon. Look at them. You can see them move. Wow. Amazing. There they go. Look at that streak. These lights are getting better and better. Well guys, it's 1.30 and we're getting back to our truck. We are worn out. Northern Lights sure have danced for us though. But yeah, very, very tired. Ready to eat a little bit of food and sleep and sleep and sleep. Well, it's now 2.30 and we're just getting ready to climb into bed. See what tomorrow brings. Well, here we are the next morning. Slept in just a little bit and enjoying some biscuits and gravy that we freeze dried. Very windy this morning, as you can tell. I even parked the truck here in front of the tent just so it's not as windy. It's breaking a lot of the wind, but that's still how much we're getting. It was really bad. I was concerned it was gonna blow over. So we're not sure what we're gonna do today. Maybe take it easy, we're just worn out from yesterday. We'll see. Well, good morning, we are, what are we here? Today is Monday morning, and Saturday we had that uh, rough day where we got the caribou and we got home at, got into bed at 2.30 a.m. So we literally spent yesterday just resting and we needed the rest, it was so good to just, uh, it was super windy, so it was nice just to lay in here we did, the boys and Avalon did go on a nice walk and it went out, uh, I don't know, probably went a mile or more, a couple miles maybe, across some creeks and stuff. And But I just kind of hung out, rested, and this morning, what was our plan, Ethan? What are we going to do today? Uh, we packed everything up and we're going to go, like, hike in five miles and take a, another small tent and try to camp there and then hunt around there, like spike camp. Yeah, Justin, why are we going in five miles? There's a five mile restricted area on both sides of the road uh, because of the pipeline. So bow hunters can hunt in there, but we have to hike five miles off of the road to hunt with a rifle. So that's what we're going to do. And yeah, camp there and then hunt from there. Yeah. So Avalon, what do you think? Are you having a good time? Yeah. Avalon was really a trooper. We actually did some close calculations and we think it was about 16 miles uh, that we did on Saturday. And she 
That was her first hike. She was a real trooper. She carried her pack almost the whole way. Finally, she I kept saying, Avalon, I need to take your pack because she was getting pretty worn out, as we can understand, as we all were. So, But she did really good. It was really happy. And so we got everything packed up. Um, I'll show you outside. It's snowing. Uh, it snowed last night. Rain snowed and blowed. But we're going to, like Ethan said, hike in. Our plan is hopefully, like I said, going maybe five miles. Uh, and maybe hopefully we can, you know, camp and then we'll run in some caribou. And then we can, you know, uh, hunt from there and then just, just sleep there. So we'll see how it turns out. Uh, the adventure continues. Buttoning it up. Heading out of here. Well, here we go. We're pulling a sled this time in hopes of pulling a caribou out with it, the meat. And hopefully, coming out a lot heavier. Yeah, this is a lot of work, but how great it is to do this with your children. Pretty awesome. At least it's not raining right now or snowing. The sun's actually peeking through a little bit. And uh, that's pretty awesome. It's just really tough walking. Here's the stuff we got to go over. Well, we've been walking for two and a half miles and it's been actually pretty warm, amazingly warm for considering it snowed this morning and haven't seen any caribou at all on this side of the highway. But we did just come across a whole bunch of tracks in this moss, which is a promising sign. They went through here recently. So we still have two and a half to three miles to go. And then we're going to set up camp and hopefully we get some caribou trotting by our camp. That'd be ideal. We just spotted our first caribou. They are probably four miles away on that distant mountain over there. And they're just specks, but there are definitely caribou. We think there's seven. And we still, they're right on the boundary, but they're so far away, they're kind of out of our range right now. So we're just gonna keep moving ahead and go out to our boundary line and then we can start hunting. These things move around so much that they could be a mile, miles away before we ever got there, especially with our packs on. And they're just, more might come wandering by. That's a very, very good sign. Fantastic. We just got here to our five mile restricted area line. So we are now legal to hunt, trying to find a place. It's amazing. Everything on this tundra is just soggy, soggy. All this tussocks, everything in the middle, you sink down four to eight inches every step and you hear water squishing underneath. So. Not quite sure where we're going to find a place to camp. Kind of looking around. Yeah, kind of hard to sleep here. Water there. So we'll figure out a place. But it's a lot more open than I was hoping. And we keep seeing those caribou over there. A couple miles away. Kind of grows grazing away from us now. There's, uh, I think, 12 in the group, looks like. Um, but they're definitely too far away tonight. So I guess we'll set up tent and maybe we'll just spend tomorrow just hiking around here, literally putting on some miles and seeing if we can just glass and maybe another group will come trotting by or those will come over here this way. So just trying to find a dry spot here for the tent right now. I think this is going to be 
the magic spot. Magic or not. Time to get the tent set up. Life at base camp. We are making our delicious freeze-dried dinners. Heating up my water here. The boys are heating up water over there. It was a little bit of a challenge to get this tent situation. It looks a little bit jimmy rigged, but I think it'll work. We actually didn't bring the tent that we wanted to. So we brought these tarps along. I think we're fine. It's not, I don't know if it's supposed to rain, but we wanted to set it up just in case because that tent is not super waterproof. But it's such a pleasant evening. Now all we need is some caribou. Yep. It is a little bit squished in here, but not too bad. And let's unzip it here. I think there might be a moon outside. Oh, check it out. Yep. It smells good. Oh, it smells good. Very nice. All right, see you tomorrow. Well, we got up this morning and put on probably a three or four miles, just glassing and haven't seen anything other than those caribou that are way over on uh, in the end restricted area. But coming back to our tent, we decided to pack up and head out and there's caribou on the horizon, which is just crazy. So maybe they'll come this way. We're gonna try waving a white sheet, see what happens. Looks like maybe one bowl. Five caribou all total. Well, where are we and what are we doing? We are still at this campsite. We found those, well, we saw those uh, caribou coming back from a hike today. And they were moving north. And they were not going to come this way. So, and they were within the restricted area, about half a mile. Maybe probably not quite, third of a mile. So we said, well, we can't outwalk them probably. Let's, uh, we've heard that you can hold up a sheet or something and they're curious so they might come by. And anyways, we held up a sheet and they looked at it and didn't like it. They kept on going the other direction. So that was all there was to those caribou. And Ethan and Avalon spotted another group of four, at least, um, several miles away that were moving and they headed out so not sure i think we'll probably just stay here tomorrow or tonight and then we'll head out in the morning and see where where we go from there tonight we're breaking from our style and we're going ramen noodles um not sure why, but we were running short on meals and these were lights and we brought them back here. Hmm. Moving day once again. Well, we spend a night here rain a good part of the night but it's uh actually pretty beautiful it's clearing off this morning some blue sky there <clears throat> taking everything apart and uh we're nice and dry which is a blessing and got up early and went out to spot and glass glass and finally i saw some caribou coming over this ridge way over there and it's probably i don't know two and a half miles two two and a half miles away and uh it appears that they're might be some bulls in there and they're right on the border so we're gonna get over there and see if we can see where they're at by the time we get there and tonight we only well what are we gonna do tonight so we only have enough food for today at lunch so either we have to shoot the caribou so we can have caribou meat or we got to make it out to the truck tonight so 
uh, one or the other. So we're gonna <clears throat> pack up everything, head over there two miles, and then hopefully we'll get one and just camp the night. Uh, that's the plan. If not, we'll have to head five miles out for the truck. So we'll put on seven, eight miles today, if that's the case. All right, we'll see how it turns out. I want to get the tent wet. All right, you got it. Well, we are making progress. We walked a while and we've got a while to go. It's been raining off and on. The top of that ridge up there is where we last saw the caribou. Still at least a mile and a half, but we're just walking. All you can do is walk and walk and walk across these tussocks. This is so much better than if it's marshy though. It's tough walking because these balls, you these little tussocks, you step on them and they roll. And so it's, you can't really step on them. You gotta step in between. And then it's real soft in between. But it is what it is, it's called tundra. You just deal with it. All right, we're hoping we can get up to these caribou and they're still somewhere over the ridge. We can lay down a few. They jumped up, they were bedded, jumped up and I guess they heard us, the wind was in our favor, we were downwind, but they're probably 100 yards, not very far actually. We never saw them, but they probably just heard something or I don't know, heard us walking or whatever. Jumped up, ran, all we saw was their heads and we just dropped down and then I basically saw them again one time running and it was we walked about a mile where we thought they went no sign of them now we're walking back we just dropped our packs and tore off after them with the rifles now we're walking back to our packs the mile and we look across where we left this morning in camp and probably about a half a mile from camp there's a herd of caribou unbelievable where did these things just show up randomly i don't know where these caribou went I have no idea where they could have gone because, I mean, we have, we can see for miles, miles and miles. It's a mystery. I don't know where these things went. We figured they went this way and down into a, a dip, but we walked a mile up that way. They weren't there. I haven't spotted them running anywhere. The only thing they could have done is turned and went back towards the highway. Possibly that's what they did. I'm not sure what else. So now... We're down to our last meal. It's probably about noontime. We got one more day to hunt tomorrow. That means we have to hike back in five miles and hike back out. So we gotta decide what we're gonna do. Right now my stomach is about ready to eat itself because uh, granola is a long ways down this morning. So we have to hike back to our packs, have some bars, have some lunch, and then figure out what the plan is. Do you see what I see? caribou shed laying on the tundra oh check it out look it is a cow or a young bull that's what you call a deadhead a winter kill or something like that wolf kill pretty teeny well we're making progress we got a mile and a half under our belt we decided to head out yeah, we were basically made the decision not to go after those caribou. They were kind of feeding away. And by the time we got to our packs, they were already a quarter mile further and feeding 
away from us. Would have been a challenge to catch up with them. And we have no food. Um, so it would have been a real gamble to go after them. If we would have got one, great. We would have had all the food we needed, but if not, we would have been in a world of hurt. The way it is, we're gonna be putting on uh, right at nine miles today anyway. So it's a good day, a good walk. And yeah, a little bit disappointing. We're not seeing, we're not getting into the caribou, but it is what it is. It's called hunting and not gathering. One final crossing. We got back tonight and we are having some caribou backstrap from the caribou that David shot the first day we were here. And Justin also stoned a partridge or ptarmigan. So we're gonna have that as well as a little bit of liver uh, from the caribou. So we're excited about this possibility here. Well, we woke up this morning to this snow and a whiteout so we've decided we pretty much gave our all and it's time to head home we were going to go home originally today anyways so we're packing everything up up here on the truck and getting everything stacked in here got all our mud packed up there oh and all our stuff in the back of the truck too this thing's gonna need a bath when we get back. Leave no trace. That was our tent. And I think we're gonna get out of here. We're heading over Adigan Pass here. Look at that semi up there. It keeps jackknifing across the road. Probably full of oil, freaked out. His trailer just wants to slide into the ditch. He can't get out of it. There he goes again. Well, we're driving here uh, along the highway of the Hall Road, driving towards Fairbanks, and look at this guy. A few more miles, he would be illegal where we could shoot him, but not here. He's enjoying the sunshine, and we're just going to enjoy him. Wow, how beautiful is that? Beautiful bull.